train They filled her through this land of ours And filled the sportsman's dreams Enjoy what nature holds for us Her bounty never ends Getting back to basics With the practical sportsman It's always an adventure No matter where we go From a favorite hunting spot To the highest fishing pole Outdoor life we all can share With family and friends We'll do it all together With a practical sportsman We'll do it all together with a practical sportsman. Hi there, come on in. I'm Fred Trost. This is The Practical Sportsman. We haven't been on the air around the state in the past few weeks because of the political conventions and one thing and another. But we have a show for you this evening. I'm going to dig into the library here and put a little theme together about an animal that has become extremely prevalent, not only in Michigan, but really around the country. I'll talk about that in a minute. Please stay tuned. Red Tro's Practical Sportsman is brought to you in part by Marbles of Gladstone, Michigan, a maker of high-quality handcrafted sporting knives and sporting specialties that stand the test of time since 1898. Construction workers in Michigan are in high demand. The Michigan Regional Council of Carpenters knows that carpenters and millwrights have many opportunities. Our 18,000-plus members stand for quality in work and in life. The Carpenters and Joiners Union, building with pride and quality for over a century by Hawk Hollow Golf Course Banquet and Convention Center, featuring a clubhouse which accommodates 700. The 27-hole golf course winds through 500 acres of woods, hills, and lakes in Bath Township. Hawk Hollow, a beautiful place for a drive. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Let's run that footage by for the quiz just one more time. You have four seconds. What is it? Now that was in the city of Lansing, mind you. Now if you, you probably said it was either a dog, like a German Shepherd, or a wolf, or a fox. Well, it isn't either of those. Here's a fox right here. Now this is a red fox. You can see they're, they're quite small. And that animal was uh, quite a bit larger than this. What that animal was, right here, this is a mounted coyote or coyote. Take your choice. Uh, uh, actually, people pronounce it both ways, depending on how they use it in a sentence. Sometimes I talk about coyotes. Sometimes I mention, uh, you know, it's a, it's a coyote. But whatever you want to call it, articles in the newspapers have said things like, coyote numbers continue to grow. This was an article in the Lansing State Journal by Babe Winkleman. Uh, and it talks about the, the coyote, or coyote, as, as really a survivor here. It's the most resilient and adaptable critter this side of the cockroach. Its numbers continue to increase despite the fact that an estimated 400,000 are killed every year by hunters, trappers, and government agencies. Because these critters uh, are helpful in some ways, but not in others, and they can be dangerous. In fact, I mentioned that, that this coyote footage was in Lansing. Uh, look right here, <laughs> article, coyotes move into Westland. This is Westland, Michigan, the suburb of Detroit. Another article, Lincoln Park Police issue coyote warning. And both of these were in uh, the month of May this past year. Here it is, a warning to small pet owners in this heavily urbanized suburb. Beware, a wild coyote caught recently by police appears to be well fed. So what do coyotes eat when they come into these urban areas? Well, according to this article, coyotes will eat anything from grasshoppers to garbage, from pet cats that's right, pet cats, to watermelons. Also small dogs and, in fact, just about anything. Well, the coyote that we're going to be talking about uh, in, in this show is this footage that was taken in the city of Lansing was, was taken actually by the Dent family, Chris and Stacy Dent. In fact, I interviewed them about their episode in December with the wild coyote. When did you first discover it? Um, it was about three weeks ago um, when we first discovered it in the backyard. Um, he was just out wandering around the backyard, and I got some video and told my husband. And first, we thought it was a dog because it was so big. So now, 
you don't let the little one play back there? No, uh uh, she doesn't go outside yet. <laughs> no, he's come up too close to the house too many times to be letting any of the kids out. Well, you've heard about coyotes and the problems that people have in yards and with little kids and things? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we've heard, especially in California, everybody says that they're snatching up kids and dogs and everything else in California. But so far, he hasn't been much of a problem to us. So when does he come out? Usually first thing in the morning is when we see him. Um, anywhere up to about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then we don't see him after that. And what does he do? Just wanders around. Looks around, smells some things. Um, just kind of wanders around like more like a lost dog than anything. And a lot of people think that it's a dog, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a couple people ask us, are you sure it's a coyote? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And how, when did you first know that it was a coyote? First time I saw it. And how did you know? Just from pictures and things like this that I've seen on TV. So how does this mount that we have on display here at the museum. This is a howling coyote. How does that compare in size and everything with Um, He's bigger. He's, he's probably about maybe that much taller. And I would dare say he's probably maybe this much longer. He almost looks like a small German Shepherd. Yeah. He's quite a bit bigger than this one. He's and all, I'd say he's about an average, probably between 60, maybe 70 pounds. And what do you plan on doing? Yeah. We called the uh, Lansing Area Search and Rescue, who remove animals by live trapping, and they set a live trap because they believe that he's been trapped before. They think maybe somebody had him caged up as a pet. D does this concern you, having a coyote around? Um, just a little bit, just because of the fact we're not sure what he will do, in fact, um, if he does get hungry this winter. But for the most part, no, because he hasn't bothered us at all. Now, now, where are you located? I mean, how close is this to suburbia? Um, we're at the corner of Saginaw and Waverly. Saginaw and Waverly? Mm -hmm. There's a golf course there. Yep. yep. Hungry oh, yeah. Howie. Lots of businesses. Lots of businesses. Video. Saginaw and Waverly? You're blowing my mind on this one. <laughs> yeah, it's quite right in the city. You mean you're by the golf course then? Uh -huh. Yes. Right across the street. Yeah, we're just a uh, couple of houses north of Saginaw, right, right on Waverly Road. Holy, there's a little shopping center there. Yep, yep we're behind the shopping center, um, north of the shopping center. Uh, that, that blows my mind. I mean, I live over in that neck of the woods, too. Yeah, how many people have seen this? Um, all on the Waverly. neighbors on our side of the road have seen him. St. Gerard's Private School has seen him. Um, the Michigan National Building they've seen him as well hmm. and called and reported it. Now, you made some other calls, didn't you? I mean, when you called me, you wanted to know if I could come and remove it. Yeah, right. we've called everybody because, because of the fact he hasn't done any harm and he acts like he's semi-domesticated. We've called everybody and nobody will come get him. They were gonna come over, uh, one gentleman we called said they would come over and shoot him, but he didn't realize when we told him we were in the city, that we were actually in the city. <laughs> so when he got there, he realized all the houses and said he couldn't help us. DNR won't handle it. Uh, animal control don't handle uh, wild animals like that. And we called everybody. I'll be so darned. I was told by a friend of mine about the Lansing Area Search and Rescue. They said they'd be more than happy to come out there and take care of him. So they're going to give it a try with the live trap. She says if that don't work, she'll set up camp for a day or two with a tranquilizer gun until she can get close enough to hit him with a dart. Well, that's going to be an interesting time for you. Yes, yeah. it has been so far. Why your backyard? We have a very small dog, yeah. and we have a feeling that may be why he keeps coming around. To play with the dog? Um, we have a big dog, which she said it poses no threat to him, um, but the little one is more like lunch. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's only 10 pounds. Ah. But so far, we don't know what, what the coyote's intentions are. Well, they pretty much walk around and hunt for a living. Pretty much all he's been doing. Yeah, he walks, most of the time when he walks around, he looks like a stray dog that's lost, and he just wanders back and forth through all the neighbor's yards several hours at a time. Nobody's reported any lost cats? 
They love cats. Mm, no, nobody's, not that we noticed. Nobody's had any problems with him. Maybe nobody in the dense neighborhood has had any problems with the wild coyote, but coyotes are predators. They do eat small critters, and they conceivably are a concern with toddlers or very young children. But mainly, they pounce on things like mice. Stacy Dent got a great video yes. sequence of their backyard coyote hunting mice behind the dog pen. Now, mice are only one part of a coyote's diet, and anybody who tells you that that's all they eat is full of it. Coyotes eat whatever is convenient and close and available. During the spring, I'm sure they eat lots of baby pheasants and rabbits and whatever they can ambush and chase down. But coyotes are so predatory that they eat other predators, go. not just mice and rodents. Contrary to the cartoons and some nature movies, predators do not care if what they catch is dead or alive when they eat it. They're just happy when it stops thrashing. Then down the hatch it goes. Now, predators hunt and eat like this every single day. To a coyote, a mouse is like a candy bar. It's a tasty tidbit, but hardly fills the stomach. Now, I'm of the school of thought that prefers more game birds than predators. It's common knowledge that foxes and skunks and raccoons kill tons of game birds by eating their eggs and the babies, but coyotes are predatory. They eat these smaller, possibly more destructive predators, too. At least, says Babe Wunkelman in his recent article in the Lansing State Journal, coyotes are effective at keeping fox, skunk, and raccoon numbers in balance, too. As coyote numbers went down, populations of these smaller predators exploded. And in recent years, these smaller predators, like the fox, raccoons, and skunks, have taken such a huge bite, literally, out of duck production that many hunters are now calling for massive predator control as a means of increasing the number of waterfowl and game birds. Now, I'm for more predator control, but I find it very hard to believe that more coyotes is better. Nobody's had any problems with him. Oh, he just wanders around all day long. Well, that's good that you were hot on the trigger there with your video camera. Yes. And now you have on tape a uh, coyote in the city. Yep. They're getting bolder and bolder all the time. Well, hopefully, your little girl there won't have anything to worry about. No. Oh, no. Hopefully, he'll be in a new home in the next couple of days. So, what happened with that coyote or coyote that was in the yard of the dents? Well, actually, the same day they were here, uh, with that videotape, they went home and there were two coyotes in the yard and they saw them for several days. Then John Schneider in the Lansing State Journal on the 15th of December wrote an article, Wildlife, Coyote That Visits Neighborhood Wears Out Local Welcome. Well, he told the dense story about the coyotes in the neighborhood and, and on this day that the newspaper came out, December 15th, the dents saw that pair of coyotes three times during the day by evening, that was it. They never saw the coyotes again. Now, we don't know whether the coyotes read this article, heard the scuttlebutt, uh, knew about the tranquilizer gun, or we don't know if somebody rounded them up or if somebody uh, poisoned them or what. It might not even been related to this article. But the end of the story was on December 15th, the last time the wild coyote was seen in the city of Lansing, at least for now. Now, that came from a program which was the 3rd of February of this year. And we didn't know at the time whether there would be any more coyotes around, but since then there have been numerous sightings. I've heard lots of stories and lots of things reported. Let's see, let's move to this next tape. This was the 10th of February. One week later, I had an update not only on coyotes, but wolves. Well, last week we had that home video on the coyotes in the city of Lansing. I just saw that came out about a week ago in the Detroit News, a headline, Wolves Soon May Be Hunted in Michigan. And I thought, oh, man, people are going to come unglued at that because, you know, the way political correctness is. Uh, the story is here that they're considering taking the wolf off of the endangered species list. And that could put it into the realm of being a game animal where it could be hunted. Now, why would that ever happen? It's interesting in this article that it says there's about 174 wolves in Michigan in the Upper Peninsula in 30 packs. 
And it says, as far as what they eat, deer herds have been higher, so there's plenty of food in Michigan, uh, according to an expert on this. And she says, both hunters and the public have also become more accepting. So why in the world would they even put a headline like this that wolves may be hunted? Well, let's, let's take a look at what has happened in Minnesota. It, well, normally, wolves feed on deer, moose, beaver, hares, moles, and woodchucks. Nobody has a problem with that. But in the state of Minnesota, where they have about 2,500 wolves, look at this. In Minnesota, where numbers now exceed 2,500, that diet has expanded to include dogs, cats, sheep, cows, and even horses. Horse owners, you see, might not be too excited when the wolves up there in Minnesota run out of deer and hares and beaver and start chewing on the horses and cows and sheep and dogs and cats. So that's why wolves soon may be hunted in Michigan. I don't know if soon is the story, but you know what happens when they run out of deer? And of course, this past season, we had quite a whacking on the deer population. Won't get into that now, but I uh, will be getting into that. Now, we're talking about coyotes moving south, moving into urban areas. Last week, we had that footage of, from Stacy and Chris Dent of the coyote that was walking through the backyards in Lansing. Now, as a result of this, I got a call from a guy named Max Cox in St. Clair Shores. He works at the Knollwood Country Club. That's at the corner of 15 Mile and Inkster. That's in West Bloomfield Township. Ah, they have some horses there, I, I think. Of course, these, these horses are not threatened by the coyotes. The coyotes eat other things. Now, Max Cox said that, that he and about a dozen people saw this coyote for two to three weeks, and it was in October, and it was around the country club there in West Bloomfield. And as the coyote worked the area, the foxes, he said, have disappeared. They have seen, and they used to see foxes all the time. Uh, woodchucks, gone, and squirrels, not nearly as many left. But when those populations got down, the coyote left Knollwood Country Club. Who knows where it went? And the concern here is, what if coyotes stick around and do like they did in Minnesota, where they started in on the dogs, cats, sheep, cattle, horses, even? Uh, the coyotes wouldn't eat anything that big. But what if they start eating our game birds and the squirrel, or you know, finish off the rest of the squirrels? It's plausible that having coyotes around like this, if they come in and make a quick hit, clean out the foxes, clean out the skunks, clean out the raccoons, those are the things that tend to, to raid the nests, eat the eggs, and eat the babies of the game birds and, and animals that we like, you know, the, the small game. Uh, if the coyotes would come in and then leave after they clean out those predators, that would be cool. But I just don't know the way coyotes are so adaptable if they are going to stick around and like the Minnesota wolves eating the horses and such, if these coyotes are going to stick around and eat, clean out the rest of our game animals. Uh, it's plausible that in the spring that we might have a rebound of pheasants and grouse and the small game with the foxes and some of these other small predators gone, but I don't really know if that's going to work out on the long run, but I guess it's plausible that in certain circumstances, Coyotes could help game birds in the short term. And you know, I've been reading different publications about game management, and that really seems to be the consensus among biologists and among people who are in areas with coyotes. They don't see those other predators that seem to be much more harmful to game birds. But how this is all going to play out, who knows? We still have so many opossums and skunks and raccoons, which has been a real problem. Well, let's see. We had something uh, a month later. This is the 16th of March, where I had a final update on the coyote situation. Interesting stuff. A few weeks ago, we ran that footage, the home video from Stacy and Chris Dent in Lansing. This was in the city of Lansing. Coyotes were running around the yard for several weeks, and then they disappeared. Well, we thought that was the end of it. Uh, Chris called me the other day to, to tell me to check the paper. Coyote caught at furniture store. Now, this is in, in, in Delta Township, less than a half a mile from where I live. It was in Value City parking lot. It was a coyote 
right there. I mean, there's people pulling out and apparently sick or something, but uh, the, the county sheriff and animal control captured it and they have it under observation now. But I tell you, these coyotes are becoming a real problem. I don't know what it's going to take for the DNR to address this issue. I also said in the segment that I did about wolves, how wolves had attacked horses up in Minnesota. <laughs> I get a fax here of apparently from the Bay City Times, coyotes attack horses. This is around West Branch. No kidding. These, these people, the DeWitt family recently, re, recently returned from a weekend-long snowmobile trip to find something wrong with their six-year-old horse, Rosie. The hair from the lower portion of her front right leg appeared as if it had been chewed. No signs of a struggle in the paddock where Rosie and another horse roam. Jane DeWitt and her family were puzzled. The skin was broken. There were four holes on both sides of her legs the size of 50-cent pieces. Then, the key to this is, three weeks later, they saw what the deal was. Uh, the family was eating dinner when they saw three coyotes near the paddock. This time, the animals attacked the family's 10-year-old gelding, Sam. They were trying to get at its feet and behind it. He was kicking him. He put up a good fight. Coyotes attacking horses in Michigan. You think coyotes aren't a problem? Think again. Since then, a guy came in the museum and told me about a coyote that actually attacked him. I, I don't think it was a real vicious attack, but he was deer hunting. And the thing came running up and actually jumped in and tried to bite his arm and turned around and ran off. And he said it was a coyote. But I don't think there's been any confirmed reports of anybody being hurt, at least, uh, in this state being attacked by coyotes. Interesting stuff, though. I find that as I go through the, the videotapes right now, I'm digitizing tapes, and I'm learning to do a digital editing system for this TV show. You, you know, everything's moving to digital in the video industry, which is going to, well, nobody knows how much it's going to change things. I, I think it's going to pretty much turn things upside down when it comes to technology, and, uh, well, this is something I'm just going to hang on and see what it's going to bring in the coming year. I start the new TV season the beginning of September. Well, actually about the second week in September. A couple things coming up in September. By the way, we do have our Puppy Saturday, which will be Labor Day weekend. It'll be the Saturday, the 2nd of September, right here at the museum in Bath. So uh, bring your puppies. There is a, a charge for bringing them if you want your puppies promoted on the website and so on. Uh, but Call us for more information. Uh, September 8th, I'm going to be up at the Marbles Polychoke shoot. Sporting Clays, I've done pretty well this summer, um, at least winning prizes. My scores haven't been all that great, but the Lewis class system of scoring, you can win prizes even if you're not a tremendous shooter. Uh, we have coming up, uh, as I mentioned, the new TV season. Uh, I'm going to do a different format on the show. Uh, I'm going to do a little different objective. It's time to change things up. Society is changing so much. Television is changing. The outdoors is changing. And we're changing here, too. I'll have details on that, uh, well, in a couple weeks. In the meantime, get outdoors. Enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about. And I hope to see you back here next week. Fred Trost Practical Sportsman is brought to you in part by Marbles of Gladstone, Michigan, a maker of high-quality handcrafted sporting knives and sporting specialties that stand the test of time since 1898. Construction workers in Michigan are in high demand. The Michigan Regional Council of Carpenters knows that carpenters and millwrights have many opportunities. Our 18,000-plus members stand for quality in work and in life. The Carpenters and Joiners Union, building with pride and quality for over a century by Hawk Hollow Golf Course Banquet and Convention Center, featuring a clubhouse which accommodates 700. The 27-hole golf course winds through 500 acres of woods, hills, and lakes in Bath Township. Hawk Hollow, a beautiful place for a drive. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Well, that wraps up this edition of the Practical Sportsman. It was our, sort of our wildlife quiz night, and we talked about the coyote here which you can see the coloration and the size of it much bigger than a fox. Got another quiz coming up right here. What is this critter? It's sort of the same size as a fox, except it has the, the coloration of a coyote. Do you know what it is? Well, son of a gun, I'm out of time. We'll have to get back to that next week. I'll see you. Last week we had uh, some wildlife quizzes, 
You know, we learn, well, this is a red fox, this is a coyote or coyote, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But I ask the question, what is this? It has that same mottled coloration. The hair is, is much like the coyote, but the size is much like the fox. Do you know what this is? Well, this was mounted by taxidermist Tim Hayes here at the museum. He did this for Roger Vrabel and Roger's collection of mounts that he has on display here. And uh, if you don't know what this is, uh, it's probably because this comes from another continent. It's not a fox, it's not a coyote, um, it's a jackal. And they're indigenous to Africa. Um, they're a very family-oriented animal. They're monogamous, which means they, they mate for life. Um, they have very strong family values. Um, they hunt in pairs, and they bring the food back to their young, and they'll even regurgitate food for their young. They're very similar to our foxes. But they're smaller, aren't they? A little bit smaller. I mean, foxes aren't real big. Um, our foxes look, may look a little bigger because they have more hair. So you have to deal with the colder temperatures. So. Or in Africa, it's quite warm. They don't have the, the thick undercoat like our foxes would have. I mentioned last week that you mounted this. I didn't. I didn't. It's, it's part of a collection of a really good customer of mine, and I'm not even sure where he had it done. But it's fairly old, too. It's been around for a while. But that's a jackal. Yep, you know, its biggest enemy would be the hyena, which kicks everybody's butt in Africa. The jackal may fear the hyena in Africa, but in America, we don't have to worry about either of them. The jackal lives in our museum, and so far, hasn't bothered anything. ...of December wrote an article, Wildlife, Coyote That Visits Neighborhood Wears Out Local Welcome. Well, he told the dense story about the coyotes in the neighborhood, and, and on this day that the newspaper came out, December 15th, the dents saw that pair of coyotes three times during the day. By evening, that was it. They never saw the coyotes again. Now, we don't know whether the coyotes read this article, heard the scuttlebutt, uh, knew about the tranquilizer gun, or we don't know if somebody rounded them up or if somebody uh, poisoned them or what. It might not even been related to this article. But the end of the story was on December 15th, the last time the wild coyote was seen in the city of Lansing, at least for now.